Hi everyone, I'm back. It's I know it's been a little while, but I've come to the conclusion that just not every week I have something to sh interesting and new to show. Um, my goal with the video is that you're at least mildly interested and entertained by what I have to say and to show you, rather than outright, you know, bored. So, I figure I'll wait till there's something interesting enough and show you at that point. So, anyway, we are now back together and I can show you what I've done. You'll notice that I have some ladders here. They now work, which is very exciting. And this took a lot of work to do. And I'd like to explain to you why that was. So if you're trying to do something like this, or you haven't already, um, it'll give you a little bit of a heads up as far as what, you know, what goes on with, with ladders and the different challenges that I had to face in getting them to function properly. So, the first thing was I had to do some logic that if the player's, you know, bounds, the, the rectangular box that defines, you know, the player's, uh, coordinates and the space they're taking up. If the player's bounding box is intersecting a ladder, they would, you know, and, and one of the, the keys that affect ladder climbing is down, like the down key or the uh, up key, then begin climbing. Well, begin climbing itself is pretty complicated because you have to have two frames that you're switching back and forth between as you're climbing. Then you have to lock onto the ladder's position. You have to cancel out left and right movement. So there's a lot of little tweaks that, that would go into this. Um, and when I'm climbing, and when I'm going onto the ladder, right here I'm hitting the up key. Now if I was actually just using the dot intersects uh, option and comparing the bounds of the ladder and the rectangle for the player, then it would already be climbing. But I didn't want that to happen, so I specially created like a, a 25 pixel bounding box centered over the player's center that would detect climbing. This way it works a little better and the player doesn't immediately zap from here to here on the ladder. That was kind of cheesy and wasn't really the effect that I was going for. Another one of the things I had to do is have the player detect when they reached ground level on the ladder and immediately stop climbing. So all I did there was I used the existing uh, ground collision checking that occurs and I just said if the player is locked to ladder then immediately lock to the ground beneath the ladder if they're colliding with it. That one was pretty straightforward. The one that was not so straightforward was reaching the top of the ladder and standing on top of it. That was downright a pain. And after thinking about this a lot, I had a few options. I had, well, do I add a special ladder piece that's like a top ladder? Or do I somehow test all the surrounding area <clears throat> to see if this ladder is the topmost ladder in its, you know, ladder? <laughs> or what do I do? There's just no easy way to go about doing this that I can think of. So what I did was I created an invisible one-way object where it would check for ground collisions, but it would not check for side collisions or head bumps. I'll show you how this works. Um, I'll create one of these special down-only floors. I'll create it right here so that you can see. All right, so I'll leave that mouse cursor over it. Now you can see I can jump right through this spot. I can go horizontally through it, but if I go on top of it, I land right on it, as you can see, which it shows when I'm in edit mode, the, the, the rectangle of its bounds. So all I did was I put these on top of ladders, and I was thinking I was so smart and it was going to work great, <clears throat> right? And then when I actually went and tried to go down, I realized I couldn't go down. I could go up through it, but not down. So what I did was I made this special object, and you can see it here, how it's darker white, or should I say brighter white, over the top of the ladders. Um, I said, if the player is locked to a ladder and it's colliding with the, one of these special down-only floor objects, only collide with the ground if we're pressing up. So if I'm going, if I'm holding position or I'm going down the ladder, nothing is happening. It's as though the object does not exist. But if I'm going up, I will collide with that ground and connect to it. So that's how I got around that problem. And as I was coming up with the solution, I also visualized a, a potential situation where you know maybe the player is going up in some kind of elevator or something like that and uh, maybe I have to go past a point where the player has to stand and not fall or there's an invisible floor or whatever else it just I had the impression it would be something I could use in the future so rather than do a crap load of programming to ladders to detect a figure the topmost one and do special collision circumstances I figured I'd just make this because it seemed a little more generic and I'd be able to use it in the future in different situations the other challenge that I had with the ladders was that I had to be able to go in between two blocks. Um, if you see the way Mega Man or other such games work, 
these are standard 16 by 16 pixel blocks, which right now are blown up to 48 square to match resolution. So I, you notice the player is a little too wide and is not falling in between these two blocks. Mega Man actually would, um, but this sprite was made a little bit bigger. It's not the final one, and it's it's going to be shrunken down a little bit. So since they're not falling through and going to this ladder, I had to add a special test. The special test so that I can get through these blocks is basically instead of testing with the player's regular uh, bounding box, I created a special smaller bounding box that is uh, like two pixels in width. So there's actually a thin slice being tested. So the top and bottom are still being tested accurately while you're on the ladder. That's important for knowing when you're at the top or the bottom of a ladder. But the, uh, the thin slice allows you to sneak in between a couple of blocks right here and you can get up to the top and you can go down from the top and go right through them. Also, if you hit the jump button on a ladder, you just fall. I figure that made sense then, more than having this gigantic leap. But that's just a matter of changing one line if I wanted to alter that behavior at all. So, I can go up and down through these with no problem. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it was, it was sort of a pain in the butt to make, but it was sort of a necessary feature. And now I can move on to some other things. So, so now I have three special interactive elements that get tested. I have the map teleporter, which loads a map. And that one's not doing anything right now. I don't know why, but I'll figure that out later. Um, and then I have the ladders, and I have the special uh, down-only floors that get tested at the top of the ladders. So I just make a big loop for all the interactives, which refers to a base class, and then I can add those in uh, as overrides. And uh, they inherit from the base class, so I can just have an array full of ladders, uh, down-only floors, teleporters, Later on, I can have conveyor belts and interactive elements that do damage, like flame jets or smashers or whatever else. And I'll do the same thing with all the different enemy types as well. So that's kind of cool. And each each class, like say the ladder, has its own special collision logic that gets handled. So that way, I don't have to test map background tiles and then you know all the ladders, then all this, then all that. I can just test the uh, static you know map tiles, whether they're collision or background layer. Then I can test interactive objects all in one nice clean loop. So, um, I also did a lot of code simplification, which then introduced bugs because I had to rethink the way that the logic was going. But in the case of things like player input, I cut down my code on like a half. And collision testing, I was going through every tile and testing for um, ground collisions. Then I was going through every tile and testing for head bumps if you were jumping. So, so then I just changed that to test for everything. Then inside of every single uh, iteration of the loop, I would test for the head bump, or I'd test if there was a wall collision, or I cut down on a lot of code that way, so four months ago doesn't sound very long, but when I think of how far I've come doing this, and when I look back on my code from the beginning of it, uh, it seems like a lot longer than that. So I, I did a lot of that behind the scenes, and that's why there were fewer, you know, oh my god things to show you that were very, very interesting. Um, next I'm going to be doing a little bit more cleanup of my code. I'm going to fix a few small bugs that are happening with my um, tile toolbar, things like that. And then I, uh, gonna, I'm work, gonna work on creating some levels since my artist is creating some artwork for me right now. And I'm gonna update my level editor, probably with some kind of zoom out feature so I can more easily define map zones where the screen will zip back and forth and things like that. Because right now I have to hand code those into the map data files themselves. And it's not the easiest way to go about setting that up. And I'd rather be able to just change those on the fly so I could tweak the map until it seems perfect. So, so I'm going to begin creating some levels in the near future, hopefully. And then I'll be able to populate them with some enemies and you know, begin actually creating more of a game-like structure. So, um, I also want to thank Koeus5, or whoever I pronounce your name, on Twitter, and Sharpie23. Because it's kind of fun to see some other people who are doing some programming projects and sort of uh, feel like there's a little bit more of a community out there every day. So if you follow me on Twitter, my name is Retro Thomas, just like YouTube, and uh, if you have a project going on, I'd like to hear about that too, and feel like I'm surrounded by some more uh, programmer geekiness. So until then, let me know your questions and comments, and if you're working on a project, I hope it's going well for you, and I'll see you next time.